I went to an educational lecture about ERAS and having never heard about ERAS found it very interesting but at the end of the lecture I asked the anesthesiologist who was leading it where does cardiac surgery fit into this and he quite frankly told me it wasn't being done. So cardiac surgeons historically had nothing whatsoever to do with enhanced recovery. Uh, we didn't really know what enhanced recovery was. And the other thing that is, is worrisome is that uh, you could have uh, four hospitals uh, across town in the same city and each one of them will take care of their post-operative patients completely differently. They'll use different medications, protocols, um, and uh, will each be absolutely sure that they are providing um, evidence-based best practice for their patients and in point of fact they can't all be doing it correctly because um, there can't be a benefit to that much variation. And the biggest challenge at the bedside for the ICU nurse has been that there's been so many preferences, um, so many ways of doing things. One person says fluid, another person says no. So uh, that's a huge challenge. And that's the foundation of enhanced recovery. It's a um, a multidisciplinary value-based approach to care that seeks to apply the best evidence not individual surgeon preferences to the care. I think we've undervalued everybody's input for the long time, longest time and I think ERAS kind of opened up our eyes to how important it is to, to listen to other providers and other specialties and, and know that they're their concerns are real and, and what they've seen and their experience and their, their knowledge is, is only going to empower us to, to provide better care for the patients. If you want to get a surgeon's attention more than saying goal-directed therapy, that will not get their attention because their attention is driven by the STS database and uh, most surgeons in this country report their outcomes to the STS database and get star ratings based on the STS database and they know that one of the key um, outcomes is AKI. They may not know what defines AKI per the STS database, but they know AKI is bad and if you have too much AKI you're going to be on a list of um, uh, low star ratings for STS. So uh, the prevention of AKI through the use of goal-directed therapy will get any surgeon's attention, absolutely, and there's no question they're related. So short of death, which is obviously bad, uh, take back to the OR, which is bad. Renal failure after um, cardiac surgery is one of the biggest STS negative markers. So physicians very much aggressively try to stay away from that. So we, as intensivists who care for their patients, really push patients to not have AKI, and we consider it a failure. I often think to myself, and it's pretty simple, if you came into the OR for surgery and had normal functioning kidneys, why did we let them die? Because we have all the tools to keep you euvolemic, keep your pressure up, and keep you volume replete. So we should never let you die. And somebody will say, well, I didn't know what their volume was. I thought I should dry them out more. Well, we have tools for that too. You know, if you want to put an A-line in and use the regular flow track, fine, use that. Goal-directed therapy flow track. If you don't like the A-line and people say that, I don't like A-lines, use the clear site. We use both of them very well and we're very comfortable with either of them driving our goal-directed therapy to decrease our risk of renal failure. We like to say here we've had multiple positive nephro checks, but we reversed about 40 kidneys in the past nine months, and we think that's a huge number. Yeah, so the cardiac ERAS program absolutely cannot be done alone with the cardiac surgeon. In fact, my advice would be don't even let the cardiac surgeon lead it. The surgeon needs to have the buy-in, but the leader of this needs to be a, um, a nurse coordinator. It took a nurse uh, to pull it off. Um, it took someone who was uh, under understood at the patient level um, you know how the care was being delivered on a minute-to-minute -minute basis uh, to really you know, make that a reality. So what do my nurses understand about this? They're superstars and our nurses are very engaged. In fact they're the ones that come to me and say I've done this, this, and this. We're now past that point. What's the next step? Mm -hmm. And I really like that because it puts us on as team player. C-suite bought in from day one because they loved the idea that Dr. Williams and Dr. Bradford are actually talking to each other and hey, they might even like each other. And bringing these different disciplines uh, together is huge and hospitals love that. So when you have nursing and anesthesia and pharmacy and your surgeons sitting around a table together and then bringing in your intensivists and your cardiologists, that's great for everyone. That makes the hot, that alone, that
that one thing makes your hospital happier and more efficient. So ERAS Cardiac, uh, we've only been in existence for two years, uh, so we have our first goal, which we've just about completed, was publication of guidelines. Uh, and that was a huge undertaking. Uh, our goal from that point on is to help programs to start their own ERAS. Everybody gets empowered by ERAS and, and feels valued and, and they now want to contribute and say, hey, have you thought about this for your next phase? And then now we have our first phase done and we're we're just blowing up with ideas that we want to do with our second phase and, and administration and everybody, including the, the from any every phase, pre op you know, preoperatively, intra-op, post-op care, everybody is, is on board um, and really pushing for us to, to provide better care. We're not we're just not satiated with the numbers we have. We want them to be even better.